Hello guys, uh, today is a quick tutorial on making the glitch effect that you can use uh, uh, for like receiving the damage. Uh, for instance, if you are making the game about sci fi techniques like uh, I guess vehicles, uh, helicopters, or uh, maybe some kind of uh, sci fi soldiers, uh, like crisis, I guess. So when you receive damage, uh, you will see the effect that you saw from the demo. I used it on my daily job and just want to share the idea how you can achieve this. So, first of all, the post process. So, create the new material. Next thing is to set material domain as the post process. The logic is quite simple. We are blending between the final color of our scene with the sort of offset on the x-axis uh, in terms of the UV it's the red channel uh, and using also this uh, not like this also use this mask that is sort of the offset to our UV with the colorized uh, gradient as an alpha so basically final color shift on the left uh, sort of with the colorized linear gradient uh, effect. Uh, so, what do we need here? Basically, this mask. Let me show you how it looks. So, as you can see, we have two generate offset bands we generate a black and white uh, mask. Uh, here we can define the width and sharpness for both of our masks. The reason why I use two gradients uh, just to make it uh, like quite versatile. You can adjust the direction and the speed of each uh, band. Also, uh, this uh, attributes are unified, but you can make them uh, separate for each uh, mask. Uh, next thing is to add the movement to our bands. Simply using Panner. I have here uh, the Vector 2, with red is the first attribute, the red channel, and green here goes to our second mask. Uh, minus means that we are going from like to opposite direction and texture coordinate here as you can see they are different we tiling here uh, if we go with the high well it means that the band will uh, increase its uh, white count the lower value means that we are uh, having uh, like very wide white uh, areas so go around play with these values also you can modify this to be uh, the vector 4 and if you have vector 4 you can modify it through the material instance also here max uh, so if we have overlapping values we will receive the maximum value uh, not to like here we just um withdrawn with the clamping node next thing is to is to add the shift for our uh our U coordinate. So here on the red channel from the texture coordinate, I'm adding this mask to it and then append the green everything to the green channel so we have modified uh, texture coordinate. And here is the trick. Uh, I've called it the threshold. Uh, so basically, I'm going to modify it through the blueprint. Uh, with the timeline, so when I receive damage, this value will change from zero to something small and then back to zero. So we'll receive 
short disorientation effect. And everything here goes to our steam texture post process input zero, our final color. So this will have the shift on our U and V channel. And another one here is, let me show you what we need to do. We need to create this sort of um, gradient from black to white or white to black, wherever you like. Uh, so simply texture coordinate mask R, subtract and sign to have it as sharp as it could be and use it as the mask for lurping between our colors. Uh, the reason why I use make floor 4 is that without this one all these computations uh, won't compile. So red offset, blue offset, uh, I prefer using colors that uh, if you add them together you will receive the gray color, so the colors that like uh, green and uh, red um, Mm, yeah, I made a mistake. That should be the green one, but like uh, the, sub, the the adding effect of two colors uh, should result as gray one. I preferred it. Like for me, it's more natural. Uh, it looks better, and the contrast is better. But as you see, I I totally forgot to make a green one. So nevertheless, this one is multiplied by our mask here. And we receive something like this one. This we multiply by our uh, syntaxe color and go to alpha. Next thing is to create the post process instance. Here you can define your values, threshold should be zero. So when we start modifying it for our blueprint, uh, everything should war should look as there is no post process at all. But here you can uh, preview the result of how much threshold you should add to receive a uh, good result. So that's actually the how the effect looked. But with simple blueprint logic, you can achieve much better results. So here in the first person character, I have quite simple logic just for the sake of the demo. On the event begin play, I create dynamic material instance, and for our first person camera, I provide it as the reference of the blood uh, bendable object. So now our camera. Uh, can uh, work with this post process. And here is sort of uh, event that stands for receiving damage. I have the timeline with this curve, so the whole length is 0 0.5 seconds and it's growing and decreasing like the sine wave. All it do, every time I receive the damage, it checks whether my post process is valid, so I can apply the scalar attribute with the proper name, and I use this alpha to learn between two values, from 0 to 0 0.1. This value uh, is actually the maximum of this threshold, so that's how this logic works. And here are our results. One more time. This one with using some vignette and other post processes can lead to great results for like receiving damage and make your game look more realistic. So guys, I hope you like what you've seen. Um, everything is under, to the, under the description to this video, my Patreon, my Discord, and yep, see you soon.